All right, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio and uh, up to the interview portion of the program. And today, pleased to have as our special phone-in guest, Micah Taylor. Micah's been with a lot of independents. He started in 2003. He worked for uh, Deep South Wrestling under Jody Hamilton. He does a lot of training and uh, has been under developmental with the WWE. And has just got a ton of stuff going on. And uh, we're going to talk to him today and find out what all he he has got going on. And uh, right now, welcome to the program, Micah Taylor. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me, dude. I look forward to this. Well, we greatly appreciate you coming on, man. And I I followed your career some when we were getting, when Deep South was doing the uh, the television there, we were getting some of that locally here in South Carolina, and I was following you guys, and, and you guys were getting a pretty strong push there in Deep South. Tell us a little bit about Deep South before we go into your history. Deep South, it's got a lot of rumors out there about it that are pretty dang true, man. It was, it was a bust, I don't know, it was bust but I don't know if I'm allowed to curse on the radio, but we, we busted our butts there, man, and, and you know what I mean? Those, those rumors hold true. Now, the politics side of it, the rumors, you know, of... You know, Bill being a jerk and this and that. No, no, no. Bill DeMott, I was going to clarify right now. Bill DeMott's a hard-ass coach. Yeah. Trainer. And that's what he does, man. If you're going cardio, you go to Bill DeMott. And, and you know, Mike, and I don't know how you feel about it. I know you do some training, too. When, when, when I was doing training with some of the some of the younger guys, man, my, my deal was when you come in and, and or straight off the street, you know, you got to take it to them, bro. And you got to, you know, you got to welcome them to the business, so to speak. Yeah, you got to make them respect the business and right. what you got to do. Because there's a lot of guys that crap on what we do. And they think that it's fake. Absolutely. And you got to kind of break that right away. Yeah, you instill it in their bodies, man. Like even right now, just off subject, you know, I got this uh, school that I'm doing, and I got guys that come in here, you know, I've trained here and I've done this and that. And after the first day, I've had probably about a handful of guys tell me that I've been ripped off, man. Nobody's trained me right. I've never heard any of this stuff. Sure. Go, and, that's and that's because the there's a lot of guys training you wrong. Exactly. And that's the thing about it. Some of these guys, man, go to train at these backyard places. And get, you know, basically how to maybe take a bump. And the rest of it, man, no psychology, no character development, any of that stuff. You exactly. Know, you, you need somebody who, who trains right. And, and I've always heard Bill was a, was fantastic about that kind of stuff, is really instilling respect to the business. Absolutely. That's that's what he's good at. All right, uh, Michael, let's let's go back a little bit. What what got you into the business? Were you always a fan? Were you, you know, were you brought into it that way? Or, or did somebody see you? Tell us about how you got into business. Yeah, it's a funny story, man. When I was, uh, I was a military brat, my dad was in the Marine Corps, and I was born in South Carolina. And then we went to Okinawa, Japan when I was a baby. And then from kindergarten to third grade, you know, I was overseas, and we only had one station over there. We didn't get anything. And so I would pick up Japanese restaurants every so often. So, when, you know, in first, second grade, it kind of caught my eye. And then when we moved to Orange County, California, you know, and I was third and fourth grade, all of a sudden I'd wake up Saturday mornings for Saturday cartoons, and WWF would come on television. And I was like, holy cow, you know what I mean? Sure. And I'd see the Hulk Hogan's and Randy Macho Man Savages coming on with all the glitz and glamour and the entertainment. And I just thought it was the coolest freaking thing ever until it got to the point where my neighbors were older kids that were into it would come over on Saturday nights and we'd spend a night. And they'd help keep me up to watch Saturday Night Main Event and stuff like that. And I just kind of started following this stuff by myself, buying the action figures and going and, you know what I mean, this and that and keep going until it got to the point where when I got out of the Marine Corps in 2000, I went back to Hawaii and I was still a fan. I was watching a match between Hulk Hogan and Billy Kidman. On and WCW. Billy Kidman was wearing the t-shirt and the jean shorts, I think. Yeah, on w- in WCW, sure. Yep, and my mom looked over at me, and uh, which, you know, your parents usually aren't fans of wrestling like you are. Right. But she looks over and goes, if this guy in this t-shirt and shorts can do this, she goes, why don't you try to do it? Yeah. Because you're an athlete. She goes, as a matter of fact, you want to do it? She goes, I'll pay for your training. So that's basically what got me started. I called her bluff on it, and she paid for it. And I signed up and started rocking and rolling. So when you got initially in, did you have to find a place? Or, you know, did you, was there a local place where you could go and kind of learn the craft, so to speak? Or, or? I'm going to tell you exactly what happened, man. I saw a local access television in Hawaii. It's a, it's a company called Olelo, and they had some crappy wrestling on it. Yeah. Well, I didn't know crappy wrestling then, but I saw it, and I knew there was a promotion in Hawaii. And so I called the number on the bottom, and the guy goes, yeah, he goes, come out, I'll train you. It's this much money. I think it was $1,500 at the time. And he goes, and we'll train. And so I met him at the Kalakaua Gym in Waikiki, or Honolulu, and he pulled fringe mats out of a little storage room, the little mats that go around ringside, and we put them out in the grass field in Hawaii, and I paid him half up front, and he taught me to bump that day. And I tell you right now, it you know earned my respect because I knocked my freaking gimmick in the dirt bumping on those mats in the field. <laughs> I went back the next week, and I paid the other half. You know what I mean? And all he did was he bought me around a little bit, and he chopped me, and he body slammed me on these mats. And then he called me the next week, and he goes, hey, you know what, man? He goes, I fold. I go, 
goes, excuse me? He goes, I sold, brother. He goes, I'm done. I said, you can't be done. He goes, I just paid you to freaking train me, and we spent like two weeks together. And so he goes, well, there's another promotion here I'm going to hook you up with, and they're going to let you try out for free, you know, and see what you got. And I was like, okay, you know, as long as I can, you know, continue my training and do my thing. So he hooked me up with this other promotion. I think it was IXWF back then, Island Extreme Wrestling Federation. And so I went there, and they made, I went through the squats and the shoots, the blow-up drills and this and that, and those guys, and they go, you're pretty good. We're just going to throw you a match this weekend. You down for that? And I said, okay, sure. I went back the following week for training, and I showed up to training. And so I stood in the ring. I go, where's everybody else at? And the guys, you know how that goes. Well, I don't know. They're supposed to be here, but nobody's here. I right. said, okay, no problem. So I just roll around the ring. I do my own thing. And that was right about the time when Tough Enough was coming out on television. Sure, yeah. And so uh, my wife, Tracy Taylor, just gave birth to our daughter at the time. We got two kids. So I asked her. She wanted to start getting back in shape and stuff. And I said, well, you know, Tough Enough just showed how to take hip tosses. You want to go down there and practice it with me? And so we went down and we practiced, you know, the stuff we'd see on TV. Of course, it was wrong. The more we learned about the business, you know, the more we learned of how wrong we were being treated on the independents over there. And so she sat me down one night and she goes, you know what? She goes, you're really good at this. You got a lot of passion on it. She goes, and I believe that, you know, you can make it in this. If you want to go to Ohio Valley Wrestling in Louisville, she goes, let's do it. And I go, you know what, let's do it. And so I, we packed up our stuff. Um, I didn't quit my job. I took a leave of absence because my job, I rewired helicopters for the military. They had a, I guess, shop in Richmond, Kentucky, which was an hour and a half from Louisville. So we packed up and we moved there. And in January of 2003, we signed up for the beginner class to both of us. And we started training there. In OVW. In Ohio Valley Wrestling under Nick Dinsmore. Eugene Dinsmore. Right, yeah. How long were you guys there? Um, I was there for, in the beginner class, I was there for six months. I would actually, I'd work through lunch during the week so I could get off early on Wednesdays to go work security for OVW television in the crowd. And then uh, we'd train Saturday mornings and then we would drive to uh, OVW spot shows and all they would do is just throw us in battle royals that's how we got our experience and stuff but yeah, Nick really looked out for us sure yeah I got you know and taught us everything and so after six months they invited me to move up to the advanced class and because our kids were still young the advanced class at OVW we were training with WWE contract guys and so my wife kind of took a back seat and let me learn you know what I need to learn and I still you know smarten her up when I got home on things and this and that and then uh about a year and a half into the advanced class at OVW I got hired by the WWE and that's when I got my contract in uh, February 2005. And that's what I want to pick up at when we come back from the break, Micah, is, is when you got picked up by the WWE and you actually mm -hmm. did some, some dark matches and did some velocity and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we're going to take yep. a break right now. When we get back, I want to pick up right there. And also I want to talk about you doing the uh, motion capture for THQ video games. And that's very interesting to me. I want to get into that also. No we'll, problem, dude. Let's do it. Great. We'll pick it up right there with Micah Taylor uh, Inside Wrestling Radio coming up next.